A new study links certain hormone therapies to breast cancer in younger women. We check in on the measles U.S. comeback tour that no one really asked for, and we discuss a new opportunity for pharmacists. That's what we're unpacking today on RX Report, where you get your health and your news delivered. I'm your host, Mason Manuel, coming to you from the home of pharmacy at the American Pharmacists Association in Washington, D.C., where the heat and stakes are super high. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button, leave a comment on anything and everything that we talk about today, and let's dive in. We start off today's show with some scary news. Certain types of hormone therapy may significantly increase the risk of breast cancer in women under 55. That's according to a new study published in the journal Lancet Oncology, which looked at estrogen and progestin therapies in younger pre- and postmenopausal women. The researchers found that the combination hormone therapy, aka estrogen plus progestin, was linked to a higher risk of developing breast cancer compared to those who didn't use hormones at all, and in women under 55, that number jumped even higher. Quick disclaimer, not all hormone therapies are created equal. The type, dose, and duration matter big time. So before we start throwing out therapies like their last season's fashion, let's all just pause for a second. Also, let's not ignore the pharmacy angle here. For pharmacists counseling patients on HRT, this is the moment to double down on patient education. Have those tough conversations. Talk about the benefits and risk factors, family history, lifestyle. Talk about how many cups of coffee that you had that day. We're looking at the whole picture here. Bottom line, this study is a big deal, especially for younger women weighing the pros and cons of HRT. As always, consult your healthcare provider, your pharmacist, and your brain before starting any new treatment. Have you ever received hormone replacement therapy or know someone who has? Were the effects more or less as expected, or maybe did you experience some of these unexpected effects? Let us know your experience in those comments. We'll get to our next story in a moment, but first, hey, APHA community, exciting news for you. Nominations are now open for the 2026 APHA Awards and Honors Program, the pharmacy profession's highest recognition of leadership, innovation, and service in pharmacy. This is your chance to spotlight the mentors, colleagues, and rising stars who are making a real difference in patient care and advancing the pharmacy profession. With award categories spanning profession-wide honors like science and research, pharmacist practice, and even the prestigious APHA fellow designation, there is a space to celebrate every type of change maker in the pharmacy field. Nominations are open through September 8th, 2025, so don't wait. Head to pharmacist.com slash membership slash awards to submit your nomination today. As we discussed a few weeks ago on this show, measles is officially back. Thanks, I hate it. According to a new CDC report, as of July 1st, 2025, over 1,200 measles cases have been reported in 38 states, with 27 outbreaks just this year compared to the 16 outbreaks in 2024. To put that in perspective, there have been more measles cases in the U.S. this year than any other year since the disease was declared eliminated a quarter century ago. The reason for the swelling of cases boils down to low vaccination rates, with outbreaks stemming from the Texas and New Mexico areas and then growing from there. It's not news to say that measles is highly contagious, with most unvaccinated people extremely vulnerable if exposed. This is, again, where pharmacists come in to shine. Vaccine education and outreach are more critical than ever. With measles back on the radar, it is a red flag for vaccination gaps and a rallying cry for public health. As always, pharmacists, again, talk to and educate your patients. Patients, talk to and be open to this education from your health providers. This is no joke. Measles is brutal and its spread is dependent on those not protected with the appropriate vaccine treatment. But I'm curious, have you had difficulty with the misinformation about measles and its spread? If you're a pharmacist, how do you educate your patients to let them know about the dangers of what they could be exposed to? Leave us a comment and let us know what you're thinking. Before we close out, just one more thing. With the increased prevalence of diabetes, accessible and personalized care is now more critical than ever. With APHA's clinical implementation of continuous glucose monitoring, aka CGM, in the Community Pharmacy Certificate Training Program, you'll gain the clinical, operational, and business skills to successfully offer CGM services to your patients. Designed to support the community pharmacy setting, this critical course includes a self-paced learning plus a live session, in-depth guidance on CGM device operation and data interpretation, best practices for documentation, workflow, and reimbursement strategies to engage patients with confidence and clarity. Don't wait. Check it out right now in the link in the description below. 
And that is our show. If you learned something new today, like how your HRT might be playing chess while you're playing checkers, or the fact that measles is back from retirement, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button to the channel and drop a comment with your take on today's topics. I want to hear from you. Our executive producer is Rob Hodges. Our creative producer and co-editor is Kate Erdman. And until next time, I've been your host, Mason Manuel. Be sure to tune in next Friday for more RX Report, where you get your health, your news delivered. But till then, bye, y'all.